Before there was caffeinated CX, there was coffee with Dave. Here's an episode of that back from May of 2021. But first, a marketing spell. Lorem ipsum dola sit amet, consectator adipissing elite, said Yui's mod, felis quis ornaria cumsan, lorem lacus venenatis tellus, nec auctor risus enim nonante. Nullam gravi director sit amet nisel commodo solicitudin, aliquam roncus, nisio elefend mollis, lorem turpis elefend purus, nec bibendum lectus velitut arcu. Donica commodo nislac urna tristic tristic. Sed iuis mod non velit, nec da pibus dol caffeinated CX mwahaha. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Dave. I'm doing something different today with... I have... A script. So, that's new. So, let's get started with the script. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, once again, good morning and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Dave. I'm Dave and this is coffee. Take sip. Oh, take sip. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Okay, let's just jump right into this, okay? On today's episode of Coffee with Dave, we'll be talking about the five keys that need to be turned to have a memorable, positive CX. CX just means customer experience. Now, the customer experience and the customer service doesn't start and end with the company's contact or call center, right? It's the entire customer journey that matters. From the initial marketing that go that gets the customer to pick up the phone, this is the old school way to signify phone. Now it's like this, I guess. I don't know. Um, or to check them or check us out on Google. To the person answering the phone or the chat, to the dispatchers who call with the scheduled times and updates on their technicians, to the technician and channel leaders out in the field, to the operations manager, to the follow-up call and beyond. All of that is CX. Every single step of the customer journey counts and is equal. Now, the EX and the CX are inherently connected, but for today, we're going to be focused on the customer. To start, we're going to go over some disturbing facts, some frightening figures, some scary stats. These are not meant to be a scare tactic, but to wake you up and set some context. So, let's dive right into them. Okay, so, <clears throat> according to the Accenture, Accenture something, A-C-C-E-N-T-U-R-E, uh, Global Customer Satisfaction Report, Price is not the reason for customer churn. It's because of poor quality of customer service. A customer is four times more likely to go to a competitor if their problem is an issue with the customer service rather than an issue with the product or service. That's from Bain and Company. For every customer complaint a customer gets, there are 26 other unhappy Customers who didn't say anything, according to Lee Resources. In addition, 96% of unhappy customers don't complain, but 91% of them will simply leave and never use the company again, which is pretty scary. Well, I flipped the page. Because just a 2% in customer retention has the same effect, has the same effect as decreasing cost by 10%. A dissatisfied customer will tell 9 to 15 people about their experience. Around 13% of upset customers will tell more than 20. In contrast, happy customers where everything went right only tell between 4 and 6 
people about their positive experience. And it takes 12 positive experiences to make up for one unresolved negative experience. That means it takes 12 five-star reviews to make up for just one one-star review. That's huge. The kicker, 85% of all people nationwide, doesn't even matter the company, it's just nationwide, industry-wide, reported that they were dissatisf- dissatisfied with the way they were handled on the phone. That's with every company. All right. Sounds like bad news, right? All doom and gloom and no puppies or rainbows. Nah. This is good news, and I'll tell you why. Okay. This makes it easy. When all the competition is awful, it makes it easier to stand out and to stand above. When a bunch of when a bunch of other companies provide more or less the same service as you do, <clears throat> the easiest way to stand above is by providing a positive customer experience they won't forget. And how? How do we do that? By turning the five keys of CX. So let's go over these keys. We'll cover what each key is and then go more in depth with each one. The five keys are practicing actual empathy, tone, active listening, sense of urgency, and going above and beyond. All are equally important. All take great skill to wield and to turn. So let's go over each one, shall we? Okay, let's go. I don't like scripts. Uh, The first key is actual empathy. Now, customers can sense fake empathy easily. Call any bank and listen to their empathy response. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, that's okay, dude. I was only calling for my balance. You don't have to be sorry about that. It's okay. Really. Really, you don't have to apologize for that. See, it's obvious if you're just spouting off empathy statements because the person has to. Customers ain't stupid. Instead, Practice real empathy. Put yourself in the customer's place. Imagine the smell of what they're describing. The horror they feel at seeing sewage in their kid's bathtub. The pain of unexpected financial burden they are facing. The unexpected price of plumbing gone bad. Or the fact that they are being called to to delay... And even after they've made time for us and plans for the day. Actual empathy is more than just saying okay to their issue. It's understanding. And care must not be given or care must be given to not let empathy slide into its toxic cousin, sympathy. The second key is tone. The tone is the message. To be hyper specific, it is the positive tone that is the message. Now, customers don't care if you're having a bad day. They don't know about or even care about your personal life. I'm of the opinion that they should have some empathy too. But if wishes were horses, we'd all be eating steak. It sucks, but them's the breaks, as they say. So if you sound bored, disinterested, distracted, tired, sad, mad, any other negative emotion, they're not going to like that. You're draining them. Stop. Keep your tone upbeat, positive, polite. That nice line between casual and professional. Customers love that. Take or make each call as if it was your first. Make them all count. Stay positive, stay focused, and stay awake. Over the phone, whether you're booking calls or dispatching them from the office, You have a grand total of seven seconds to make a positive impression with that customer. So make every second count. The third key is active listening. There's one simple trick when it comes to actually listening to your customer. I'm going to let you in on this little secret. One passed down through the ages of customer service wise men and wise women. A secret guarded behind walls of stone and walls of fire. The trick is to actually listening to your customer is actually listening to your customer. Pay attention to what they're saying. Take notes. A novel concept. Asking your customer to repeat themselves isn't just embarrassing to you or your customer. It's the opposite of good customer service. Getting their booking or order wrong because you weren't paying attention is a big, unacceptable oof. Interact with the customer. 
The booking call and the dispatching call isn't an interrogation. It's a conversation, a dialogue, not a monologue. Interact. Ask follow-up questions. Ask probing questions. Make sure you understand each other. The fourth key is a sense of urgency. Okay, get this. Every call is urgent. Every call is escalated. Every call needs to be handled now. The best customer service agent, the best dispatcher, is effective and efficient. Don't let anyone hang out on hold more than necessary, if at all. Nobody likes being on hold. Nobody likes waiting to be answered. It doesn't matter how snazzy you think your hold music is. Everyone hates it. Don't let anyone hang around waiting for an update on their appointment. Make contact with them immediately. Your dispatcher will call you shortly means shortly, as in a few minutes. Not in half an hour, an hour, two hours, three hours from now. Shortly, like in a couple of minutes. The more the customer knows, the better. We ain't keeping no secrets. Come on now, would you like to wait? No, me neither. Let's not make them wait either. Even if it's bad news, better for them to know than to keep them in the dark, giving them enough time to say, well, I guess they're not going to call me back. Guess I'll call their competition. Hmm. Hmm. For the fifth one, I'm going to change things up a little bit. Thank you for your patience. I know that was... All right. So, the fifth and final key of CX is going above and beyond. Okay. So, customers call, text, chat, and email us to be taken care of, to be serviced. What a concept in customer service. But if they could do it all themselves... Most of them would. All right. If our customer service sucks, if our customer service is even just mediocre, why would they come back? Why would they book a call in the first place or say okay when the dispatcher calls on ascending a tech or decide to go with the options the technician presents if our customer service is bad? Hmm. There are a ton of plumbing companies in California ranging from single vans to entire fleets. They all do the same thing, more or less. What keeps them coming back to us? Well, it's our customer service and their experience with us. Their CX, as it were. Let me tell you a story, and if you're still here, hey, how you doing? All right, there was once a company, and it still exists, where a caller called in for spark plugs. Now, this company doesn't sell spark, spark plugs, nor did they sell anything even remotely close to spark plugs. Did the person answering the phone tell the caller this? Yep. After they hung up the phone, they got to thinking. They thought long and hard, and they thought, and they thought, and they thought. And then they called the customer back, got their city, got their name, hung up again. Did a Google search for spark plugs in their area. Called the stores. Priced them out. Had the store with the lowest price hold the spark plugs for the caller. Called the caller back. Little did the CSR know at this company. Everything he did was being recorded by the customer and put up on YouTube. With nothing but the actual surprise and praise of the caller. The caller initially had called in to basically a sting operation for YouTube, right? Where, look at this customer service. They said they were going to be above and beyond, and they said they'd help us no matter what. Look at them. Ha, ha, ha. And then the customer service all did. They they did it. Um, not initially, though. It took them a little bit for that, for that click to happen in the CSR's head that, hmm, it would be cool if I did this. Uh, but that is the essence of going above and beyond. So let's do our part and make the customer service as great as possible. It is not the sole duty of one department or one role or one person. It is everyone who interacts with a customer directly or indirectly. It is literally everybody, even you, especially you. 
That that was the script. I don't like reading off of scripts at all. Mostly because I'm like this the entire time. And I don't like that. I, I, I'd rather be looking at you. Like I've said before, I like you. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making these videos. These take, these take time. Normally, like, five minutes of planning and then ten minutes of shooting. But whatever. All right? So, but, like I said in the script, you're a part of the CX. doesn't matter what your role is. Right? You could have literally no contact with the customer. And you'd still be a vital role in that customer's experience. So, Think about that. What are you doing to improve the CX, the customer experience? What are some ways we could improve the CX? Remember, this starts all the way back in marketing and then contact. Then, for our purposes, dispatching. Dispatching is just as important in the customer service chain as the initial booking call, if not more so. Because sometimes when you're dispatching, it's bad news. It's, no, we can't get out there today. No, we don't have a technician until this time. Sorry. So then from the dispatcher, it goes on to the technician and the channel leader. The same, same level of importance, customer experience-wise, as the dispatcher or the person who took the initial call. Then after that, it's the operations manager or, you know, gosh forbid, our resolution specialists, right? Um, and then after, how do we treat them after their bill has been paid? What if they have a question after it's been paid? Do we reach right back out to them and answer that question? Hmm. And then it's the thank you card at the end with a little $50 off coupon. Those are cool. Those are cool. Those help bring them back because customer retention, like it said in the script and in the stat, well, 2% customer retention is equal to cutting costs by 10%. That's huge. So let's go out there. Let's get after it. Finish your coffee. I know I will. And have a good and productive customer-centric day.